Welcome back. This is Breaking Racial Boundaries, part three, episode three. Here we are again, ladies, Sharon and Sequoia here with me, Crystal, uh, discussing topics that are relevant to our daily lives in terms of race relations and how it reflects how we have um, internalized biases sometimes or these views that affect the tensions between different communities um, based on situational thoughts and, and belief systems. And so I think today we have a very important one that comes from a very um, current experience that Sequoia had. And we're just going to start there with you kind of ex explaining and sharing what happened to you that provoked you to want to share this and have this open discussion today. Well, well it's, a, it's not a, it's a classic, I guess we'll call it, <laughs> that uh, some of us have to experience in our lives when interacting with uh, the uh, Chinese community or Asian community. But in this particular case, it's Chinatown. So there's a Chinatown in most major cities. Um, I'm originally from Chicago, so I've experienced this in Chicago as well. Um, so there's a thing where, you know, money's always exchanged. Everyone to take your money, but when you want to really talk about something, a real issue, or uh, get on or want to just be open and extend yourself, all of a sudden that person does not know how to speak English, speak no English. So, okay, so what is it? You want my money and you're engaging with me for my money, I'm gonna buy from you. But now that I wanna talk about something real to promote, in my case, what happened, promoting our event, right? Um, they didn't want to engage. All of a sudden they can speak any English anymore. So um it was a very the vibe was just very negative i felt very um disrespected uh i felt all oh, this is exactly why i do not feel comfortable or nor do i shop in most chinatowns because i i don't have time for the disrespect anymore so sometimes i i f fight back by speaking german mm -hmm. right <laughs> And it's like, oh, sprechen Sie Deutsch, kannst ich kauf diese kleine Tusch, ja? You know, something, anything, and then all of a sudden it's just a blank. So you think you they know? look at you, then they see you as a person of color and that they're judging you or treating you a certain way because of that? Is that? Sometimes in general. I, I don't like to go in there with that assumption, you know, right. because I went in with the intention, like, I'm here to promote our event. This is a community build, community building kind of project, being happy and positive, uh, good vibes, and then boom, you know, typical experience when trying to shop, you know, while black basically. So um, I, I just, I, I just couldn't deal with that. And I turned away, turned out and I, I weigh and I decided I'm not gonna continue to promote in that part of uh, Honolulu, okay. but I went in the outskirts and had better reception a uh, little coffee shop, which is uh, graciously, graciously uh, will be donating to our swag bag. Um, thank you, Local Joe's, who gave us permission to promote them. Um, and then Arts and Marks. Yeah, yeah. Well, you those know, are very cultured places and mixed spaces. Yeah. So um, we're talking about a very homogenous space in Chinatown that has a certain reputation, obviously, and it has a certain view of the world from that perspective and i'm not trying to defend them by any chance but i do want to share that i was in chinatown today and i wonder if it was the same lady because i went in there because i was trying to source goodie bags for our swag bags for our big event right and and i started asking in chinese thinking that was my way in to kind of like hey you know we're our own people how much are the um, the the, the uh, lucky envelopes and you know what she said to me i swear it must be the same person she said no speak English. Uh, what did she say? What did you say? He was speak no English. I uh, speak no English. No, she okay. So yours was like she didn't understand English. But for mine, she was like, like, don't speak Chinese. Like basically, she was saying, I I we only speak English here. Mm. Which was weird. Interesting. Ooh. Sounds well, weird. Selective. Selective. So it's depends selective. on the person. I depends don't know. on the person, I wonder. Hmm. Anyway. Sharon, do you have an experience about oh, shopping? Absolutely. And I was just taking you into the fashion world that I've been in for 20, 25, 30 years. And 
I was working at um, one of the high-end boutiques at Ala Moana. So it doesn't have to be Chinatown. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all over. Exactly. And very high-end. The couple and friends came in. They were Asian. And my dear girlfriend is Korean, but she speaks Japanese. And we worked together at Chanel, but now we're together at this other high-end boutique in, in Ala Moana. And she comes back to me and says, you know, they say they don't want to work in, in Japanese. They don't want to work with a black girl. And I said, oh, okay, well, we, you know, we know how to deal with that girlfriend. You go make the money for me. And I'll give you a piece of it. She, so, you know, what I'm learning is there's another way of doing things too, you know, because they were, now you're talking about taking food off my table. Mm -hmm. So from, from that time forth, we created a bond because they didn't know that she could speak Japanese because she's Korean. Obviously she's Korean and lovely. And so that what we were a team from that day forward. So she, I would be in the back ringing it up because you have to keep track of your sales. You know, money changes people. Yeah. And I would definitely give her a percentage and they never knew it. I never came mm -hmm. back out mm -hmm. because I don't have to be tolerated. I want to be appreciated. And I said, okay, there's no way, there's a way to skin that cat. Yeah. She was my teammate. Huge sale, was wonderful, and everybody was happy. The, 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 the client was happy, I was happy, and my girlfriend was happy. See, sometimes when you're in those situations, you have to really figure it out. You have to really think on your feet. Am I going to, because what is the name of this book that I read? Offense is the bait of Satan. It's this yes. book that is just absolutely wonderful. Being offended, it, it, offense is the bait of Satan. That's the name of it. So mm -hmm. at that moment, you really have to center yourself, put your feelings aside and carry on. And that's, that's wonderful. And, you know, taking the high road, of course, is the right thing to do. It's just a shame that you even have to navigate and go through all of that just to be, you know, why can't I just walk in? Oh, I see someone who wants to sell these goods to me, these beautiful clothes. Why should anything else matter? Um, but because we have to try to find other strategies just to exist, just to right. put food on your table is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. And it's and like, so it's still in a way putting the onus on us, but in a way it strengthens us because right. they lose out because it makes us stronger emotionally, intellectually, in all kind of ways as a more fuller whole person in the long run. It's just tragic that you even it's have tragic. to go there just to do it. And it's this is... Awesome. This is how we're complicating this conversation by inserting the perspective from different places. So, you know, in my research for my my film, you know, there's a part in it where um, I learned that my family, they were able to go to all the shops, right? This is during segregation um, in the South, Jim Crow, um, where, right, historically Black people were not allowed to go in the front entrance, let alone try on clothes to buy anything. So the Chinese were able to go in the shops and try and close and buy just like the white people did. So how does that complicate our racial narrative, putting all this together? Like, how are we, how do we address what Sequoia, you just said about your negative experience in Chinatown being treated where you felt like it was a racialized treatment? And, 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 and how do these things build these tensions between our communities while, Sharon, you know, to your point of your experience of the shop and being in the back room to do your power playing into the system I, I feel like this is all revealing again this whole dominant foundation of this whole white power that pits us against each other and then it yeah. makes us all marginal characters and we all have our, our negative experiences and then we have these continual tensions I don't know and, and you know well, it's, it's so many different ways I, I don't know if I've told you this story before but maybe not on this show that I did go to a, a, a lovely um, country club. I sent my Asian girlfriend in there <laughs> just to have a feel. Right. And then she told me how, what the, what the, what the climate was. was, right? Yeah. And they, she said, well, you know, it's going to be this amount. And it's okay. When I went in there, 
to do business and schedule a power lunch for women. No, it was Women Making History. But March is Women. It's March is um, Women History Month. They added five hundred dollars. Hmm. Not fifty. Not two fifty. That's a lot of money. That's the black tax. The black tax we talk about all the time. And I yeah. wrote the check because they don't think you can write the check. Mm -hmm. I wrote the check and went straight to my lawyer's office and was treated wonderfully. Once he called them, I went to his office. He said, what is, I was just furious because, you know, to your point, Sequoia, what people sometimes don't understand, it hurts mm -hmm. to be discriminated against. It's, it doesn't feel good. You know, I can't help the color of my skin. I can help my attitude. That's something we have control over. And I used to always say, is it the color of my hair? Or is it my Chanel, my Allure perfume that you are offended by? I go that right sometimes. And that just confuses them. Oh, 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 oh. No, there's nothing there. <laughs> and, you know, going back to Sokoya's experience about the lady saying, speak no English, it just really opens up this whole other idea of language and how we use it um, for certain situations or you know again if I'm going to reverse it is like the whole anti-Asian thing is with the whole um, you know COVID where there's a lot of anti-Asian sentiments is um, anytime anybody has an accent people are going to say go back to your country and you know it sounds so overdone this wording but it it persists and in my is not just my community, it's just like everywhere in the world. I, I know friends who've gone to places and because they are Asian looking, they are increasingly being provoked by usually white people, I hate to say, um, saying go back to your country, right? So these narratives are being kind of um, very troubling to, I mean, it's always been there, but it's, it's increasingly so. And then how does that speak to anti-Black sentiments? Like, how are we bringing these conversations well, yeah. together? It's like what we spoke with the Asian eyes and the contradiction of yes. like, oh, you punch down, say that Africans have Asian eyes, but we have our eyes, our diversity is the whole human family, you know, yeah. Yeah. but then they want to westernize their eyes, you know, and then in what we're speaking of today, you know, speak, you don't speak any English, more white people tell, you know, have the anti-Asian hate, but yet it's being marketed that it's black people who are going through hate as well. You know, we're the only group that doesn't have a bill to really protect us. The Asian, the anti-Asian hate bill went right through, you know? And We've been waiting fighting. how many hundreds of years? Um, 400. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, and so it's a perception it's, built by media, built by... Yeah. So when I went to this Chinese lunch last week, one of the ladies said she went down to the South for some uh, some trip and she was had a fear in her, not a fear of um, danger, being endangered, but a fear that she as an Asian was going to be attacked because she mm -hmm. felt this throughout a lot of major um, cities in the mainland, which is what we're experiencing now. Mm -hmm. But she said to her surprise, she didn't feel that at all. In fact, the entire Black population that she had been in confrontation with were very warm and, and, and receiving. And she realized that a lot of the people who were creating these narratives were the white people. And again, I'm not trying to racialize our conversation, but there is something about this assumption that you're speaking about, right? That's the so, divided conquer. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's in using language to weaponize. It could be like, one, you know, I'm always sympathetic and empathetic to uh, English being a second language for our immigrants and people who come mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. you know, but a lot of times the cliche, the stereotype is that people assume that African Americans don't know any other languages, you know. Yes, I will concede that more of us should know more of our African Swahili and things like that, but we do know the other, you know, European classics. So that's why it's from, for me, a default, I will start speaking German just to yeah. check them right back yeah yeah, yeah. You know, because the assumption is oh ha i can use my language because you you know you people don't speak anything and i can use this to like to avoid any kind of interaction with you other than wanting to take your money as a transaction but there are interpretive you know? things with language sometimes we miss in misinterpret or we think we're hearing something i give you one example and please don't be offended when i when you when you hear me saying this but in chinese there's this term a lot of people when they're trying to figure something out they're trying to say it 
um they go nigga 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 like that okay yeah i know that word yeah All right so it means this is this is but it sounds mm -hmm. like obviously a very mm -hmm. you know, derogatory word um mm -hmm. and and so people who don't know that they have nothing to say about that they are taking it personally because they're so hypersensitized obviously with this term and then it creates this huge tension and in fact i think a professor was fired because of that because the the students complained that he was using that word when he had no intention to so the play on words and language and the mistranslations of it and how we are so hypersensitive to being racialized in the wordings that in fact I feel like we're creating these dangerous spaces because we're not open to seeing things for what they are but and at the same time there's also you know that's not just the only time this happens this is it you know, you take One it, you let it roll off, and you go to the next shop, and it's the same vibe. You know, so there's something to that. It's not just about being sensitive. It's just that there's anti-blackness in there's real. Town, yes, that's Honolulu. real. Correct. There is. Right. It's yes, real. Yes. And there, in the AAPI community in general, there is a, a strain of anti-blackness. Yeah. And, um, you know, no matter how you go in, I have wonderful, beautiful human friends of the AA, AAPI community within and every community. So I'm not making a general uh, statement about anyone. I'm just telling you this is, I don't have to justify this truth, but this happens not just to me, it happens to a lot of us in engaging yeah. in business mm -hmm. with Asian communities in this particular case in Chinatown. Yeah. So it happens, Even, you know. Go ahead, Sharon. You were going to say something. Well, you know, that brings me to our event on yes. um, February the 9th. These are the type of conversations that we want our attendees to have and feel safe. You know, we have an event that is Thursday, February the 9th at the Pacific Club, and it is, is breaking racial barriers, panel discussion, and tasting event. So people who come, we want you to know this is going to be a safe space for you to air and discuss how you feel, what has happened to you. You know, we need to build bridges. And our, our model is we build bridges, not walls. So it's, it's from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we are gonna have signature cocktails, you know, to get you, get you going, <laughs> have some fun. Uh, we have two major guest panelists, uh, civil rights attorney, attorney uh, Andre Wooten, and we have a retired rear admiral, rear admiral <laughs> Alma Groki. She's fired up and ready to go. And so, a, a very great, yeah, a diverse audience that we're building. Oh, for sure. I'm so for excited. Sure. And I also want to And wanted entertainers, to share, too. Yeah, oh, the dance, Sequoia is going to be dancing. And, and we have drummers. Composing and, you know, a businesswoman that uses the performing arts and media, mixed media to tell these unsung heroes and stories and narratives that need to be highlighted. So it's But let's not fool ourselves. We are, we are breaking grounds here because even during our process in trying to figure out our event and going in to meet people, we as a team, the three of us have, I mean, I'm not going to, if it's okay for you all to share, like the moment we meet somebody who's going to be like, oh, what, what's this all about? They see the three of us, sisters of color, coming to them, and you can see like this whole thing going on in their head, like, okay, what are we dealing with here? What kind of an event is this? Because this is something unusual in Hawaii or just in general. There's not enough of these boundary breaking communities coming together to create such an important conversation. Well, it takes courage. Yeah. That's exactly what it's all about. It takes courage to speak the truth. What we're talking about, these are facts. Yeah. These are truths. This is, this is our story. And, and, and another point I, I wanted to bring up, when people are constantly saying, oh, well, you know, they came over here as Im immigrants and, and now they're so successful and they're doing this. You didn't come like we came. We were shackled on a ship to each other. And, and look at us today. We have the first African-American president. We have the first African-American vice president. And the list goes on. So- The big court we, justice, female, is, female, female, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, we didn't speak the language. 
they wouldn't give us a job. Yeah, you know, it, it's so much yeah, that yeah. we yeah. had to yeah. go through to just eat, to, to just come up eat. from yeah. not something from nothing. That we're the only group, the only one that had to bring up something from nothing. We were yeah. mothers and fathers and doctors and priests and leaders and kings and queens and everything else in between in Africa, minding our own business and this thing happening, got taken advantage of because of warring nations and things. But overall, we had to start from scratch. And then when we did build up before- uh, Tulsa? Then yeah, we built up everything. Yeah. Schools, banks, you name it. We had a businesses and then there was a wave across the country of uh, terrorism, white domestic terrorism, and burning down black towns. Yeah. No, right? Because they could not handle us excelling. That's when they come after us, when we excel. And people refuse yeah. to look at these histories. They want to erase them because it makes people uncomfortable. And so again, going back to our event is we're going to put the stuff on the table. It's not going to be a comparative conversation. It's going to be a sharing conversation. Yes. Sharing every, each other's experiences and having empathy for each other's histories and connectivities. So here yes. we are, February 9th. I'm excited gonna about this. Okay. Thank you, It's going to be awesome. And I, I hope people are going to be brave Sign enough up. as we are. <laughs> Come we'll on see. to the website and sign up for uh, a ticket on Blurring the Color Line, www.blurringthecolorline.com and uh, come see and talk to us. Thank you. Aloha.